What up, Internet land? Mark Fest, author of Sir Thrival Guide for Living in America Car Free. So, yes, this is the second half of the Time to Bounce Back vid. Had fun making the first part, though. I want to spell it out in a more detailed way as to share future plans, including as those relating to this channel. As of yesterday, Saturday, the 26th of March, 2022, I am 162 pounds, like 162. Height, 5 feet, 5 inches. Since COVID broke a little over two years ago, while my leg muscles have kept their original shape and strength, my body's upper half has atrophied in a serious way. No shortage of material around the waistline, though. Coming up on age 55, my body has done what most men's body do in their 20s. Specifically that, the waistline begins its expansion while the weight number just stays the same. This happens at the expense of the upper body mass accompanied by replacement of muscle tissue with blubber. The moobs have stuck around as the upper body deflated, of course. That's just how it is. Pretty pathetic, huh? So, being in the worst physical condition of my entire life, what a perfect springboard to show how to break out of a decline, jumpstart things, using car-free as a leverage. A movie I recently saw, When the Game Stands Tall. One could call it a football movie, yet it's way deeper than football. A training item used by the coach was a commitment card coupled with perfect effort. Why is this worthy of note? The movie centers around Concord, California's De La Salle High School football team, which had won 151 games straight. That's 151, like 151 which is apparently the longest winning streak in sports history. So if you want results with something, you listen to people like their coach, Bob Laudasseur. So with commitment card, you write down two, three, four things that you commit to doing each and every day. The perfect effort aspect means you show up and you wholeheartedly follow your commitment items each day regardless. Possible exception item, one rest day per week. This, this is the one I made. So each day I'm going to use the rowing machine downstairs in my building gym for at least 20 minutes. The only exception to that is if I go do a gym workout to stretch at least 30 minutes daily and to consult my paper planner calendar at least twice daily and to do so more than as just a uh, job timesheet. And finally, I'm going to document my progress with a health energy log that I'm still making up. But this, this is what I struggled with for the past couple of weeks. When you do something like this, you don't want to make goals just so grandiose and lofty that you set yourself up to fail in the first week. That's basically pipe dreaming. Yet you do want to commit to something that's at least somewhat difficult. Hard enough that you struggle and squirm at the initial thought. So this is my life for at least a year. What is the bodily vision? Along with restoring my energy level to be more consistently vigorous, I'm going to restore the upper body beyond its original. Bruce Lee's height was five foot eight versus my own five foot five. Only three inches or eight centimeters of difference. Check this out for height. This is the only difference between mine versus that of Bruce Lee. <sighs> 
so close to being a giant, yet so far. Anyways, his body type is pretty much the same as mine, yet consider that V-shaped cobra-like upper body of his, where he could probably jump off a tall building and body glide down to ground level, even if there was zero wind. I don't entertain delusions of a Bruce Lee body, though in context of our similar body type, here lies an already blazed trail, especially when 90% of my body work needs are above the waistline. Now, the Lord has used my job to give me a really cool windfall, both for restoring my body and for taking care of business. My job schedule is now on a split shift. 7 a.m. till noon, a four-hour lunch, then back on from 4 to 8 p.m. Contrast this with the peeve I've had against standard issue eight to five work days. It's hard to build yourself up with that. Taking a class, getting private training, even just doing errands by daylight. With 90% of corporate managers, hey, Mr. Boomer, I'd like to attend and join Toastmasters. It's just a couple hours, twice a month. I get paid on an hourly basis, so the company loses zero money due to my absence. Please, can I take time to do this? I can come straight back and work till evening closing. Um, I don't know. Uh, Rhonda Butterball has dialysis three times a week, so we're already struggling for coverage in your area. If you could forget your cute little idea, that would be great. The idea of corporate chattel trying to better themselves makes control freak managers uneasy. To any company that is grappling with the great resignation or just plain old staffing issues that they've always had, you will attract and keep quality, competent people if you make it easy for employees to better themselves. Even if it means they skip out of the office for two or three hours on such and such day. Oh, extend that beyond favorite people and cushy jobs. You know, out to the call center, contractors, agency staff. Yeah, I know it hurts, but even to those people. It would be great if we could do that, but we have business needs. Oh yeah? How you doing with that on your present MO? By the way, business need drove my company to ask me to work that split shift with the four hour lunch. So understand that I have no delusions that such could be gone weeks from now or stay like that forever. I swear, a prime point in favor of starting your own business, getting something going for yourself, is that you can take time to better yourself, study something. And if you cannot, you will truthfully know that it's the legit business need of your baby venture, not the ego need of control freak management. Returning to my decrepit state, coupled with this unexpected tailwind behind me, it is time for me to bounce back, so I will be sharing about what I'm doing as it happens. Oh boy, I'm gonna share my journey. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. It's okay, it's okay. I promise, it's not gonna be like that. Focus of this channel is indeed still about car free. Not just how to mealy mealy exist but really how to make things happen for yourself and for your family while living car free. And even if your life is already perfect, except for that price of gas just going up and up and up, you can purchase Survival Guide for Living in America Car Free from Amazon for only nine bucks. Now, to keep this channel actually helpful, I gotta hear from you. Please, Comment below with questions about Car Free, plus any thoughts, ideas you have. Of course, like and subscribe while you're at it. 
Thanks for uh, joining. Laters, mark out.